Hi, my name is Quentin Stokes Brown and my iLink Senior Project is on the importance of preserving historical documents and their use in tracing African American genealogy. I've always had an interest in history and when I found out that my family had an original manumission document in their possession for several generations, it really inspired me to take action to learn more about my family's history and the generations that came before me. The document that my family had in their possession was the manumission document of my great 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 grandmother Gaddy Dennis who was a slave in Worcester County, Maryland and was freed in 1830. The first step I took to find out more about my family history was by speaking with my mom to see what she knew. Hi, I'm Jackie Stokes and I'm Quentin Stokes Brown's mom and as a part of his um, research project, we started talking about uh, our family history and I started sharing with Quentin my experiences growing up. Uh, my grandfather and my father had a, um, a great interest in family history. My father and my, and my mother and some other relatives were part of a family reunion committee and they would uh, put together the family reunion every year. But my dad began to document the family history and he uh, plotted out boards with the family genealogy and um, one Christmas he actually gave us a, um, a family tree where he plotted out all the information that he was able to gather on the, on the family tree. One thing that my grandmother and her sisters did was they preserved a document that was passed through the family that was the manumission of Gaddy Dennis. And they kept it in, in great condition. In fact, my cousins talk about how they always talked about this document and they kept it in a safe place. And so it's in, it's in good shape so that we could even read the details that are on the manumission. Um, this is a photograph of my, um, my grandmother when she was a little girl with her family. My great-grandmother and my great-grandfather, and this is my grandmother and her siblings, her sisters, Catherine and um, Zella and her brother Harry. And at some point in 1965, there was something that went on with some family property in Maryland. We think it's property, we're not quite sure. We're still trying to figure that story out. But um, it, it had something to do with Gaddy Dennis because Gaddy was raised in Worcester County, Maryland, which is actually Snow Hill, Maryland. And Gaddy and her children and their children remained in Maryland. And then um, one of Gaddy's grandchildren married um, a Lewis, who is this Lewis right here. And um, Gaddy's granddaughter is my great grandmother, and they moved to Pittsburgh. So that's how the family migrated from Maryland to Pittsburgh. And um, so my grandmother at some point wrote a letter to Worcester County Clerk of Courts, and we're not quite sure what this is all about, but there was some money involved, some checks were, were, um, were written. So we're still, that story is still evolving. After I spoke with my mother, I wanted to find out about the significance of having a manumission document and more about the history of slavery in Maryland. It is um, extremely rare for someone to have a manumission document as you do of your ancestor, um, Miss um, Dennis, um, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, <laughs> one thing is that the vast majority of black people were not um, emancipated until, uh, until 1865 or afterwards. Secondly, the work of genealogy um, is a very, very time-consuming um, 
resource intensive uh, work. Um, the ability for anyone, particularly black people, to be able to trace their history all the way to the mid 19th century is an amazing task. Maryland uh, was unique. It had the largest community of free blacks in the nation. Um, it was affected by these many currents that we've discussed earlier. Uh, one, we have black people who are running away. You have black people who are purchasing their own freedom or family members who are purchasing the freedom of other family members. You have the um, different obstacles, um, the obstacles of freedom starting to crumble a little bit where it's much easier for a slave owner to personally free quote unquote his or her own slave. In Maryland, in places like Virginia, in certain sections of North Carolina, you have the transition from wheat agriculture to tobacco agriculture, where in some cases you have this surplus of enslaved black people. So if you have these laborers who you have to care for, who aren't making you money, eventually it will, be in your, it will not be in your economic self-interest to keep them. So it kind of played hand in hand with the whole charitable notion of freeing someone. So you have these different, um, you have these different developments, these different um, structural arrangements occurring um, in Maryland in the late 18th, uh, early 19th century, which very well provides a context for the liberation of your ancestor, uh, Gaddy Dennis. Which, which again is key because Maryland has this large number of free blacks, so it's no coincidence that she would be numbered among them. Luckily, your family, uh, a number of members of your family, uh, recognize the importance of the preservation, the excavation of that history, of, of, of your family history. Um, but again, that's rare uh, and that's unique. After I spoke with Dr. Hayes, I spoke with the local historian at the Richland County Public Library to find out some possible reasons why Gaddy was freed and also how I could discover more information about my other ancestors. What I have looking at right here is the manumission for Gaddy Dennis, and it's, it's a, a, an original primary document that's been passed down through the family. Those kind of documents are very rare, and they're wonderful when families have them. In this case, analyzing the document is a really important first step, is to take it, and fortunately you can read this one, but we can through talking it out, we can analyze it and really get some dates like about how old Gaddy was. We know that she was probably born and raised and from Worcester County, Maryland. It says that she was manumitted by uh, Richard Hell, we believe is what it is. One next step for the family to take would be to contact uh, someone in the Worcester area about the Hale family, see if maybe some Hale papers or documents were donated to a state archives or a historical society. I can't help but wonder on here when it says that she has a large scar on the back of her right shoulder that's the result of uh, cancer. Maybe she was manumitted because she was not healthy and the plantation owner did not want to take care of her. Or maybe the plantation owner was very fond of her and he wanted to manumit her. Maybe she was manumitted through a will. We don't know. Those are all reasons that she could possibly have been manumitted. There could be something in a diary or certainly something in the plantation records that indicates Gaddy was manumitted and it may even tell why she was manumitted. We located her in the 1850 census with a family. That's a really rare occurrence to see an African-American in the 1850 census. For most African-Americans, they were slaves, and 
they wouldn't have been named in the census. They may have been numbered, but they would not have been named. The first census we can get African Americans is the 1870. Because of the great love and care that my great-grandmother Anna Gertrude and her sister Catherine took in preserving the manumission document and other family documents and photographs, I was able to begin the process of researching my family history and I was able to map out the lineage between myself and Gaddy Dennis. Throughout this entire process, I've realized how fortunate I am to have the large amount of historical documents and photographs that my family has preserved over generations. And I've truly just begun the process of researching my family history.